The situation is dire. Those out of whack land values and this can be potentially embarrassing. Those are excerpts from emails from powerful Jackson County leaders who have been putting on a very public show that this tax assessment was smooth and accurate and some homeowners are just complainers. Well, get ready for a brutal reality check. Here's investigative reporter Angie Ricono. Sometimes what people say publicly is very different than the truth behind the scenes. I wanted to know what top people quietly emailed each other, and this is all public record. But we had to get lawyers involved and complain to the attorney general as part of the process of getting these emails. You'll soon see why no one wanted these emails to be released. I mean, my God, how am I going to pay this? I might not be able to uh, live here. I think that is what people say because they want to pull on your heartstrings. It's unacceptable, and they will answer to God. A potentially big problem. They're saying it. They're saying that. Not us. They're talking, they're saying this to each other. We shared these emails with the homeowners who've been branded by the county as whiny troublemakers who just don't want to pay their fair share of taxes. This is their words, but it paraphrases what we have been saying. Turns out these angry homeowners share something in common with county leaders. They all question the numbers. Here's assessment director Gail McCambady, chief administrative officer Edwin Stoll, and a high-priced out-of-state consultant named John Q. Ebert emailing each other, trying to figure out how residential values were calculated. They discuss this house that was the focus of a KCTV5 investigation because the assessment jumped from 266000 to almost $600,000. The consultant wants to know what happened to the values. Here's the kicker. This email conversation reveals they don't know and they don't have an answer for all residential properties. The consultant warns the assessment department and the county are terribly exposed for residential values mailed out that cannot be explained. And they're trying to get us to buy it and we don't buy it. And this, this right here illustrates as of late as the 17th, July, we got problems, big problems with this assessment. By the end of the email, they still haven't figured out how they got the value for any residential property. Another email reveals that the value of this property was changed while the conversation continues about how the county reached residential values. Here's Gail McCann Beatty. This is the new value for Mannheim. Not sure how John Ebert got to the $290,000 value. Follow the numbers. It goes from 266,000 to 594,000, then back down to 290,000, and no one can explain why. Here's what we can tell you. This homeowner was the face of a class action lawsuit. Perhaps the assessment department wanted this mess to go away. <laughs> this all makes you mad. No one with the county would sit down and discuss it or any of the other emails we reviewed, and our team reviewed thousands. It does not mean that the overall value is incorrect. This is Gail McCann Beatty on June 24th, confidently defending the assessment. Behind the scenes, she knows there are problems and she's preparing for a backlash. In March, she emails about needing a phone bank, temp service, and predicting the large number of informal reviews we anticipate. She also sends an email about employees raising serious red flags. She quotes an employee who tells her, there's no way we can get everything completed prior to notifications going out. And what's the common thread against everything we've seen here? It's been a cluster. Yes. They knew it was wrong. We know it's wrong, and they got to just admit to it. In April, the consultant and McCann Beatty discuss a potentially big problem, those out-of-whack land values. Um, I'm angry. I'm angry for the taxpayers. It looks like um, they were there was a fire in the background and everyone was going crazy trying to figure out how to put it out. We shared the emails with Legislative Chair Teresa Galvin. I'd really like to see their response. I'd like to know what they have to say, how they can justify you know, what was happening behind the scenes. To, they were telling the legislature this whole time, follow the process, you know, everything's going to be fine in the end, you know, everything will work out with the levies. But it seems like, you know, like I said, there was, there was a fire behind the scenes and they didn't know what to do about it themselves.
The chaos continues throughout March. The high price consultant is clearly in panic mode. He sends an email outlining concerns for both residential and commercial properties, so pretty much everything. He wants to delay notices and actually writes that reviews can be successful if MLS is avoided. That's right, the advice is to avoid real sales numbers. Commercial is an even bigger mess. He writes, the situation is dire regarding the work to be done. In late May, the director is quietly trying to fix a big problem. The computer program is taking homes with small improvements and sending the values through the roof. 500, 1,000, and even 18 million percent, according to the attached spreadsheet. She writes, in many cases, there are very small improvements that went from values under 100,000 to multi-million dollar buildings. She sends a list of 23,000 parcels, some of which are highlighted. She asked the consultant to review them over the weekend because she would like to get them out on Monday, if possible, in hope of beating the original notices. I realized that the whole process was fundamentally flawed. Assessment notices roll out, and not surprisingly, homeowners almost immediately question what went wrong. It's a fail. It, is, it should be a fail. It should be an all-out recall and start over with the correct formulas. This KCTV5 report digging into land values concerned the assessment department. Where is the methodology behind that? This is a big problem, Gail McCann Beatty warns top leaders, noting information has been sent to Channel 5 as well. FYI, we are reviewing the vacant land values. Later that month, also in June, when notices have already gone out, the consultant emails Beatty, you cannot and will not be able to publish for the 2019 reassessment notices a fully accurate and uniform set of property valuations. It will take at least two years and probably four years to get things right. I think the word used to describe it by many has been debacle. You know, for me, it's it's just it's just been a mess from the very beginning. And seeing these emails that say, you know, that tell me that they knew back in March that this was a problem, that this was devastating. You know, this was dire. These are words that are used in this emails by the assessor, by um, John Q. Ebert, by you know many in here. That it's it's very concerning. It needs to be terminated. That plant needs to be terminated now. And I would go further than that. I would ask, I would ask for these people to resign. I think these people have been lying to us, lying to the taxpayers. Starting with Frank White or anybody in his office that had something to do with this and communication, including the tax assessor, should resign from office on the basis of these e emails. There's one more thing I want to point out. I asked for these emails back on June 30th. They were finished on August 20th. Then the county public information officer stalled for two weeks. September 3rd was the last day you could appeal. Call it coincidence. We were given the emails September 4th when it was too late for anyone to fight back with full information about how botched this assessment truly was. Angie Ricono. KCTV5 News.